You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa! What up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders Podcast. I'm your boy, Al Mega. And today we have another fantastic guest. This person is in the independent comic book industry. He's been doing web comics for a minute. I mean, he he does work primarily in comics, children's books. He draws, colors, and animates his own work. Let me introduce you to somebody that got this brand new book out right now that's going to be smashing it called Haunted Hill. The one, the only, Mr. Mr. Richard Fagre. Hello. How you doing, that, kiddo? That countdown is the closest I will ever get to being an astronaut. <laughs> oh man, you uh, oh man, you just reminded me. I just missed the, the uh if they did it, because I live in Florida. And SpaceX, if I just you know come out my house and look up, anytime they have a launch, I could see it. That so, is wild. Dude, I saw my fr- I grew up in New York. Mm-hmm. I, I've always seen them on TV. I've always been a fan of that. You know, since a kid, I saw the Challenger blow up on TV. And then the other one that blew up a couple years later that I thought was a replay of Challenger. And then I was like, when they said, oh, my God, I'm like, not again. I'm like, I can't watch this on TV anymore because they keep blowing up. So here I am seeing in person for the first time. It was the most I would crazy thing I've seen. Always. Like, like, if I had seen two spaceships blow up, I would never go outside. <laughs> No, I had to. I was like, I have to watch this and do it. The way it was posting, like, you know, yeah. as it was lifting, it looked like something out of a comic book for real. It was amazing. And I was so happy to finally see that myself. Like, you know, not on the TV, but, you know, my very own eyes in, you know, in this very sky of ours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> amazing, amazing experience for me. Um, and I missed today's launch, which was at one. Well, <laughs> I didn't even know it was happening. So I'm in Florida. They report the crap out of that. Yeah. You know, do you want me to try and do a recreation for you? Like I have a um <laughs> I have an old microphone that kind of looks like a piece of futurist. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my old microphone and I'm just gonna move it in front of the camera like oh yeah, it was like that. So imagine behind it just pulsating and pulsating, <laughs> you know, like like these circular bursts just coming out as it was breaking the sound barrier, I guess. You know, you see these, you know, and they were like bright red and orange. With a with, with little bit of white as it pulsated. You know, I, I had a, I was screaming to my family, you gotta see this. Only my daughter came out, she was like, OMG. My wife missed the whole thing. It's she weird comes out with the phone like, all late, like, where is it? I'm like, it's gone. <laughs> when you like see something that you know you'll never see again, like yeah, or something so uh like unusual in that way. And I think that it creates like a there's a and, and I, I can get into the politics of SpaceX and why I think yeah. Elon Musk sucks, but like <laughs> the the magic of that of magic. seeing it. It's yeah. remember when when there was the um the solar eclipse like four years ago. Yes, yes, yes. And like it, it wasn't even the solar eclipse that I thought was real dope. It was like how eerily gray everything was for like the hour on either side of it, and yeah. it just felt like oh we're in like movie lighting now. It's so good. Yeah, it, it, it isn't. Uh... This all like amazing how we live life uh, and experiences, you know, mm-hmm. of the solar system and seeing. I'm a big fan of the sky too, brother. I have my sky map, and every when I moved, the first thing when I moved to Florida was check out the sky map to see how it compares to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was obviously here. I, I see a lot more. Uh, I've, I've seen beautiful uh, alignments here. Amazing. There was a um a book about. Uh, teaching kids to count that my my baby sister had when I was like I would have been like ten or no I would have I would have been like eight and it was it was a Simpsons book Maggie Simpson learns to count <laughs> and uh, it had like you know on each page a different number of things and then the last page was like a million stars and it was just Maggie staring at the night sky but I was like a weirdo eight year old so I was like nah I counted it there were seventy six stars on that page. <laughs> And I think that was kind of where I, I parted ways with the sky and was like, I'm going to stick to the ground from now on. God, that's funny. You know, here we bridge. are. We're chit-chatting here. Wait, folks, this is Richard Fagway, an amazing creator. You know, let us know. Where, where are you from? I'm from New Zealand originally. Oh, New uh, Zealand. Hey, New man, Zealand. how many years you lived there? 
I lived there for 30 years. Uh, oh, and, damn. Most of your, most of your life then. Yeah, yeah, life. yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I did. You know how, you know, when you're like 22 and you start dating an elderly gentleman from a website and he uh, forces you to speak in an American accent while you live with him and then you find out that he's secretly married? I had that. <laughs> thing that everyone has. So you I have lost, a lifetime movie of story of, of life stories. Too. <laughs> I, I lost my New Zealand accent pretty fast when I, when I moved to LA like six years ago now. Okay. Um, and, Why LA of all places? Um, actually it's because when I was a kid, I, I grew up within like a five minute walk of three different beaches. Okay. Oh, and I know that sounds damn. real nice to some people, but to yeah. me it was hell. <laughs> I hate sand. And my my family are all like really into boats, and I'm not talking like fancy boats. I mean yeah. like shitty small boats that you have to carry through the sand <laughs> through the water. As I I was like I wanted to dip out of that as fast as I could, and we always have to go to the beach. Like every goddamn weekend, we'd go to the beach every day. And then I was watching Baywatch, and um and you know how whenever they go underwater in Baywatch, it's so clearly in a tank. And I asked my mother. Yeah, the water's too clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, so I asked my mom. Well, I, and also you can like often see the side of the tank. Like it's, yeah, you know, it's yeah. real bad. <laughs> but I asked my mother why they did that. And she said it's because um, the water is so polluted in LA that you can't even swim at the beach. And I was like, I'm moving there. I'm done. Thank God. Yeah, like I and I, I just held on to that forever. Like, and it was wrong. It was completely untrue. You could absolutely <laughs> swim in the water there. But I, I lived in LA for for almost six years, and I never once made it to a beach. So I feel like oh. I did pretty well. Well, good for you, man. So talk about growing up in New Zealand, man. Because here you are. You, you know, you, 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 obviously you're creating comics and you're writing and you're animating and doing all that. But you know, how was it? How was that culture when you were growing up? Where you grew oh, up. Oh, well, it didn't exist. Oh, like, really? It, you know, I mean, I think that there's always been a oh. comic scene in New Zealand, like, since the 40s. Um, there have been people making comics in New Zealand, and a lot of people have made some cool and interesting things. But where I lived, um, I was in, like, Auckland is the biggest city, but it's technically seven small cities kind of jammed together. Mm -hmm. And I was in the furthest north of those cities. Okay. Like, we sometimes would have to like get our math teacher to repeat things because the cows were too noisy. Like it was what? bad energy. <laughs> um, You're killing me. Are you serious? I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, like, on a farm type joint. We were like we we like had a, like Yo. we shared a fence with a farm, That's and crazy. so sometimes a bull would get into the school and would just be like, oh man, class and be like, yeah, let's chase you this know? bull around. Hey kids, don't wear red. <laughs> <laughs> our uniform was red. Oh man, that was that was trying to murder you guys. <laughs> Let's see who could make it out of this elementary school. I mean, that's a comic book right in itself, right there. But, but we um, like there were no comic stores in the city that I lived in. I think there were at 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 most there were like seven nationwide at one point, and then what? they all kind of collapsed. And I think there's like four left, um, or maybe three because one of them fell down in an earthquake. But I'm not sure they might be back by now. Um, so. Yeah, I just like I I never even seen a comic book, and then like I, I I knew that Bart Simpson read Radioactive Man, and I knew that Michelangelo read comics on Ninja Turtles sometimes, so I just always thought there were like this thing that used to exist that doesn't anymore because we have TV now. We don't need comics; they're probably dumb. And mm -hmm. I thought if I make comics, I'll be the only person in the entire world doing it, and then I'll become a millionaire. <laughs> and so I started like making comics and blackmailing my school librarian to get free photocopying so that I could like publish these little eight page books about a ghost Dude, and sell you. them at a school athletics day that I was not taking part in. Um, and then I would just use the money to buy. I, I like to pretend like I was cool. And I always say I use the money to buy Ninja Turtles. I did not. I used the money to buy Power <laughs> Rangers, which is so much less cool. Oh, dude, but I, I think you'll be happy nowadays. You know, there's a combo coming out, Power Rangers and, T, and TMNT team up. I yes. even see a new one coming out. It's Power Rangers versus Godzilla. I mean, come on now. Uh, right there, I'm sorry. Your Megazord, goodbye. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, I don't want to get get too nerdy, but I feel like maybe if they went for, like, Ultra Megazord and merged with Dragonzord or went for, like, What's the one? What's it called when uh, when they teamed up with uh, Titanus, the big like brontosaurus looking robot? From... Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, man, that was the worst toy because it was the most expensive and it didn't do anything. Like you could sit the other toy inside it and then it would like crawl along the ground. 
Oh man, really? Nothing. Like there was, there was like some of the Power Rangers toys ruled. Like the saber tooth tiger Zord ruled. It, all, it unfolded. It looked dynamic yeah. and cool. And then you had like, like uh, Triceratops was like its head folds up or down and it wheels places. Like come away. Like I know Billy's a nerd, but give him a cool robot. At least I, I know what you mean. At least even in Voltron, even the nerd had a cool robot. I mean, every mm. Voltron piece was awesome, right? Were you a Voltron fan, bro? Did you have that out there growing up? What what type of what type of stuff were you exposed to out there when it came to superhero them and stuff like that in pop um, culture? We Ooh. had like we would get these things that I don't know if they were big elsewhere or if like just no one else remembers them. But we had um we had Voltron, we had Transformers, but I never actually I've never seen Transformers. Not um, not, not your cup of tea, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Like it might be. Okay. I've just it, it just has. Give it, a chance. Completely. Give it a chance. I remember <laughs> we got the um the Animaniacs Happy Meal toys Ooh, yes. five years before Animaniacs aired in New Zealand. And everyone was like, what are these toys? What is this weird thing? And just everyone was very confused by it. <laughs> really? They're really so they're giving yeah. you something these weird you, you're like what are yeah. these things? People were like, oh, wow. there's, there's these three Did you wind up keeping yours them. and then wind up seeing it later? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like years later, be like, oh, I remember. Oh, we have toys of that in our bathroom for some reason. Mm. But too, yeah, too um, I got like, I got deep in Power Rangers for a second, and then it got canceled because too many kids were like fighting and dying. Um, oh, really? Yeah, we like I I don't. This might be apocryphal. Like you know when, like my mother was always a big liar. So she would say things to me like, don't do that or you will die like this person did. And I don't <laughs> know if it's true or not. So maybe a bunch of children paid, played Power Rangers games and all died. Or maybe it's kind of like the time my mother told me that um, there was a woman down the street. Who, okay, so let me, I'll, I'll back up a little Please bit. Tell me here. Wait, my no. mother would always just, like anytime my mother did something that was like, bad parenting she would justify it by being not as bad as this other this fictional <laughs> woman down the street and so like we had to we walked home from school and the only street we actually had to cross was like at the top of our driveway to get to our house we had to cross the street there and so my mother would be like waiting for us when we got home and um one day she was like asleep and wasn't there and so we crossed the street on our own and we were like we're gonna tell dad that you weren't there and we had to cross the street on our own and she said, you're lucky I'm not like that mother from down the street. She waits for her kids, too, but she tells them to cross the street when there's a bus coming. Oh, my God. Which I don't think is true. <laughs> but I feel like if there was a kid who'd been repeatedly hit by buses, I might have noticed them at school. You know? You oh, know? yeah. He would have been a convo. Hey, 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 Clark, come over here for a second. I want to talk to you. <laughs> and then, like, later... Was his there mother's was... name Martha? Was the lady named Martha? <laughs> <laughs> my, my mother... Um, she she got a cold and then i got a cold okay simple as that right and she said and i said to her you made me sick <laughs> thinking it was very funny and she said you're lucky i'm not like that mother from down the street you know that she waits till her children are asleep and injects them with feces from a big needle what Ew. Now, <laughs> what the hell you hear that from your mother and you're just like oh yeah that's probably true like how she told me don't bring hedgehogs into the house because that's how you get aids it's not what? she just didn't want me bringing hedgehogs into the house hedgehog anymore. damn what does she hate sonic so much <laughs> <laughs> but it was like 20 years later uh i'm hanging out with some you know fully grown adult friends and i hadn't thought about this for 20 years and then okay. someone's talking about Munchausen by proxy and explaining what it is, you know, when you make other people ill to look after them, yeah. essentially. And I said, oh, I think the woman down the street from us had that. She used to inject her kids with feces. And as I said it, I was like, that's not true. That is like, <laughs> <laughs> like And everyone was just looking at me like, hey, Richard, you have to think before you say words. Right, uh, <laughs> I would have if I was that. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> What but you know, you say? just trust you your <laughs> Wow, that's so funny, yo. That's crazy. <laughs> so let me ask you. So, was it easy for you to find a like-minded tribe out oh, there? No. You know, no. no, I had no friends. Oh, really? Oh, really? yeah. I was like a wildly unpopular. I was like and, the and, weird... and how long? Well, I mean, throughout the education, uh, uh, you know, elementary, middle, and, and and high, or or did you find it somewhere along the line? Um, I met like a small group of pretty extreme nerds, uh, in like the equivalent of middle school, um, 
and we were pretty tight for a couple of years. And then I went on to college and kind of like fell in with like the theater kids and the improv kids. And, and I like, I don't, I always sort of viewed it like, Hey, suddenly I have 30 friends and two of them I really like. And the others are uh, people who are geographically convenient. Have you disappeared? Did I, did I scare you away? Where you're like, Hey, Richard has no friends. I don't like him anymore. Oh man. This feels like every birthday party. Oh, What just fucking happened here? I, I think what happened was you were like, I don't want to hang out with someone who has no friends, and so you left. I wonder if I'm still in the stream. I wonder if I should tell a like a really good joke. I don't know one, but like if I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry, yeah. Um yeah, I, don't know, I, I got I got cut off for a minute for whatever odd reason. Really. That's all, that's all right. Um, you have, I I can't see you on video, but I don't know if that's just me or no, no. I'm coming. It's, I oh, don't know coming. what happened here. Just uh, I guess I had a momentary a uh, issue with the with my net. Now I'm just a black screen. I hope my camera didn't die. <laughs> no, it's there. Okay, but whatever. Don't don't matter. Okay, so I'm sorry. So you were saying about finding the tribe. I'm sorry, um, yeah, that, but... like I, I, I was, I was a weird kid, you know. I was, I was uh, very, I, you know, I was meant to be a smart kid. There was a lot of pressure on me to do very well at school, and I was very much not interested. Um, I, I kind of realized that I could pass without doing a lot, and then I could spend the rest of my time either making money. I loved making money, um, or, or just like making comic books for no real good reason. Uh, absolutely, uh, you're crazy. <laughs> kind of, kind of so, my favorite thing was like, I always like to have a scheme going on. I always enjoyed like, what is the way that I like? I'm very good at seeing a situation and manipulating it to to find the find the cash essentially. And like that's again because of my mother. Um, I remember she told this story once where I, this this has just become the Richard's Mommy podcast. Um, she told this story once when we were kids to my sister and I about how. Uh, when she was a kid, she uh, she her family went to get ice creams and she like lingered behind, ate hers super fast and then pretended she dropped it so that she got a second one. And my older sister said, I would never do that because it's dishonest. And I've never seen my mother look so disappointed in someone. <laughs> Damn. And I I'd like, you know, I worked out uh, when I was in when I was in middle school, I worked out. That if you withdrew a hundred dollars from an ATM, but only slid out the middle sixty and let the other forty get sucked back in because it would like time out, it would register as no transaction. So you could just get sixty bucks for free every day. Wait, 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 wait! What? That you happened? Would, yeah, you know when you know it spits out the five yeah. bills, slide out the middle sixty, and then just leave it for three minutes. It'll suck the other ones back in and be like, I guess they didn't take their money. Holy and there shit. was like, like I think <laughs> disclaimer: computer, we don't support this type of uh, computers are better now. Like they can tell, yeah. but like I know, for I know. Years, wow, really? For, I never I knew can, that. I wish I met you before. Damn it, we would have. I, I would have been visiting you in New Zealand. Hey, let's hang out, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Put drinks you, on me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I was a very, very wealthy eleven-year-old because I could get sixty bucks a day on my way to school and sixty bucks a day on my way home from school. Wow. Yeah. Gangster, yo, Rich, you are a gangster, son. And like, that's a lot of money when you're that age. You know, people are like, do you, you have the latest Limp Bizkit album? You're like, I absolutely do. Cool, oh, Richard, man. good choice. <laughs> yeah, but were you buying a lot of music too? How was that music scene over there? Um, it's all right. Like, people were, you know, we have American culture. That's that's you know, when I was growing up, it's different now. Like, there's yeah. a lot of good New Zealand stuff now. And there probably was good stuff then. It just wasn't kind of known about, you know, if you, if you yeah. look into like the history of lo-fi music, like New Zealand's pretty important in that whole thing. But um, it's when I was coming up, it was pretty hard to find anything that wasn't like on, just on the radio. And I was, I, I had very bad taste in music. I'll just put that out there. I was like, I was, I went from like new kids on the block to MC hammer it's New huge. kids on the block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yo, but you know, yo, I, I, I'll admit, brother, I had one of those uh, polka dot MC Hammer pants too. 
<laughs> I was a Brooklyn night, bro. You know, we're fashionable dudes, and then we. Yo, I said, hey, let me try these joints. Horrible, yo. Try, try to, try to really like walk around with those. It's very difficult. <laughs> that seems tough, right? Like I had, I had Jinko jeans, and I would trip over a lot. Like, wow, you said Jinko. I used to buy those joints in the Ville all the time because here in New York, that was my that was my epicenter. So I would buy the Source magazine. Yeah. They would show me the Jinkos, like you know, kickwear, all these cool clothes, you know. And I would go out to the Ville because I knew they would have it. You know, yeah. I was spending a lot of money, but at least I was working. But I was looking good. I was taking my cousin, so she's trying everything out while I'm spending the money. I'm like, thank you. Let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, I I was times. like, I was, and I also I've always been like obsessed with work. So you know, I would I would get home from school and I would immediately start writing stories or drawing pictures or making books. Like, um, you knew early on you wanted to do this. Then oh yeah 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 I like I um. So this, is, this is your passion. You built when it. I was, I, I learned to read and write like real early. And so when I was, you start kindergarten at like three to three and a half in New Zealand. What? What? Um, you, three? Really? Yeah. Kindergarten? Yeah, yeah. Over here is like five years old. They give you five years of freedom before you got to get educated. <laughs> now you got to get straight into that. Like, like you, you do not get to eat Play-Doh at home. You have to go to yeah. You don't get place. to live. <laughs> go study. But I would, um. I, I, I had learned to read and write. My parents were like, you got to do this before you get there. So three years old, I can read, I can write. Not super wow. well or anything, but I make this little Ooh. book. And I made a lot of books. I would like, I would tape pieces of paper together and be like, my book is going to be this many pages long because I have decided because I have taped it together already. And then I would write a story yeah. into it. And so like some of my stories had pretty bad third act collapse. Um, but like... <laughs> I wrote this, the, the one of the first ones I made was called Donald Duck and the Haunted House. And it was all about this time that Donald Duck uh, was meant to meet his friend Mickey to go and meet a ghost. And Mickey doesn't show up, so Donald goes to explore the haunted house on his own. And he gets up to the attic, and there's a ghost there. And the ghost has no friends, and Donald realizes he has no friends either. So he shoots himself in the face so that he can stay there and be friends with the ghost forever. What? And... Oh my god, my parents were called into the kindergarten and there were like meetings about whether I was troubled or not. And I was like, this is a lot of attention. <laughs> oh boy, I should write more stories. Oh man, but that, that is a crazy story as a kid. Like, yeah, is everything okay, yo? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here, yo? Your kid's giving me these crazy ass stories. There you go. I got it to work. I needed to reboot the camera. Yeah, no, anyway. it was just like I was I was just the weird kid. I was obsessed with horror and murder and vampires oh, i always wanted to be a vampire or a ghost those were like my oh two okay movies. let me ask you what was what's your favorite vampire flick of all time okay this is embarrassing because it's definitely the uh francis ford coppola dracula because it does suck but i have seen it so many times nah, like brother i like it too brother what's that and lost boys are my favorite <laughs> vampire yeah, movie, and, and also let's not overlook dracula dead and loving it <laughs> Oh, so yeah, too. <laughs> but good shout. So there is a film that is basically unwatchable uh, that I've been obsessed with for so long. It's called Grampire. And it's. Wait, it's wait, New... wait, I've never heard of this. Wait, Grampire? It's, it's a New Zealand film starring Al Lewis, Grandpa Monster. No, uh, you, you stop lying to me. I am not lying to you. Like, I have been obsessed with this film. Uh, like it was, it was filmed near near us, and uh, I taped it off TV. I watched it over and over again. The house that it was set in was like an important historic house in New Zealand, and we had this set of placemats with historic houses. And I would yeah. like refuse to eat any meal unless I had the one with the Grandpire house on it. Grandpire. This That's like this sound is spelled right. Yeah, yeah. I this gotta movie download this. Sucks. Like it's so boring. <laughs> But it's out Lewis, bro. <laughs> yeah. And I had like I developed this massive crush on him. Like I was and I'd never seen the monsters. I was just like deeply, deeply in love with with Grampire. <laughs> and like I'm still not over it. Like I have a I have a a, a, a big like photograph of Grandpa Munster in full costume on my bedroom wall. I have the mask of him, but it's too big for anyone I know to wear. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I will always like I. I see that man's like creepy weirdo saggy face. I'm like, oh, I want to give you a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, bro. No, but we all love Grandpa, bro. I mean, Al Lewis was the man. Um, 
He was funny. I, I saw him so different and other other things outside of um obviously the the, the monsters and he always kind of portrayed the vampire look always. I mean, like yo, Al, bro, you're more than this. But you know what? It was awesome, great energy, fun. I mean, I hope that we could get to his age and be that fun loving and energetic. You know what I mean? I once I was at a convention and. Uh, I'd written a book uh, called Irrelevant. It's about a vampire who used to be cool. Irrelevant? Let me write this one. Though. Irrelevant? I love that. It's, 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 he's just like an old-timey vampire trying to be like hip <laughs> like the young vampires. Um, <laughs> and then he gets, like, he gets depressed and like throws away his umbrella or like <laughs> <laughs> some shit like that. Um, no! And, burn and, me, son! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Dramatic. Sound like a Latino vampire. Overly dramatic. So, my man, coño, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm selling this book and this like this guy comes up and he's like, oh man, this is really funny. It's like Grandpire. I was like, oh shit, you know Grandpire? He was like, yeah, I worked I worked on the set of Grandpire. Oh, like, you, you met someone me. that worked on it. Get the I said, out. you have to tell me everything. And he said, <laughs> you know, you know the guy who played the vampire and he was a swinger. And then he walked away. He walked away. He, took, wait, he drops his bomb on you. That that, like, that that grandpa was a fun loving person. If you like, will. hey, like what? I know, I know, I was you know a what? kid when that movie was filmed, but like, what you I don't like to live more? with regrets. Yeah, oh, man, that was so funny. That Hard never. Story. Now I gotta look this up, and now I gotta look into that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You got me, you know, looking into Al Lewis after the fact even more. Like, what is going on with Grandpa, son? And I'm yeah, like, I've awesome. never, I've never looked into it myself because if I find out it's not true, that's very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're killing me. So, brother, talk about the creative journey and that journey when you started taking this on that more like serious. You know, what type of steps did you take to to say, okay, this is me taking it serious? Um, I always assumed that I was going to be like miserable when I grew up. I didn't know any happy adults. And so I just <laughs> yeah, kept up. making comics. <laughs> so like I, I, I paid my way through college making comics. I started doing more and more conventions. And then I was like, okay, I got to get a serious big boy job now. Yeah. And so I trained as a high school teacher. Um, and then I uh, got real depressed right before I was going to graduate. And I'd saved a, a pile of money. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to blow all my money and make a feature film. Yeah. Uh, self-funded and at least I'll have done something like solid and worthwhile for when I slump into adulthood and um, I thought I will I, it was, we, we shot the film one summer and then I was going to edit it three days a week and work as a substitute teacher four days a week and uh, it was about a month and a half into that that someone found one of like at that point I had a hundred books out okay. um someone found one of my books on the set of uh the wolverine movie and um the wolverine movie sitting there check you out damn <laughs> so like then a week later i'm like they they were filming in australia and so suddenly a week later i'm like living in australia staying with this guy who who was working on the film who found the thing and he's introducing me to people and what uh, how I was like, Australia, kiddo? <laughs> it was it was a wild, like I don't know, like every my whole life just kind of turned around really fast. And then uh two of my books got options, um, one to be developed as a film, which didn't end up happening, and then one to be like picked up by this new company that we're launching that was splitting off from Fox, and all these cool people were involved, yeah. and then one by one, all the cool people dropped out until it was like just me and the guy running it. Oh and then wow! He really? screwed up everything. Like there's there's enough people in there's enough people who I've run into in my life since who have been like, oh shit, you were involved with that nightmare. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, gee, thanks for reminding me. But like, you? like a lot of people, you know, if you are if you're in your 30s and you live in LA and you get kind of caught up in some weird harebrained scheme that involves starting a wrestling league and oh wow your yeah. video game tie-ins and like lying and saying that Shia LaBeouf is your best friend like <laughs> you know then you know that, that person do you really like, want Shia to be your best boy though I mean, there's I mean stuff going maybe on. not so much but like <laughs> this is before we knew how what he was um like this is this is back in the days of like I think the first Transformers movie oh, just it was still cool gotcha yeah 
And he goes, was, yeah, I love it. I was 22 Homies years real, old. Yeah. I didn't know that this guy was a crazy person. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'm going to dip out of New Zealand immediately and, like, move to America and become a big famous boy. And uh, so, of course, it all fell apart. And then I end up, like, sharing a hotel room with a pro wrestler um, at, at Comic-Con, being very, like, scared and confused and not knowing what is meant to be happening. And my book is being called because it's misprinted. Wait, wait, wait. Did you, wait so I can't then make you share rooms with people you don't even know? Well, the, the company who uh, who that th- th- this guy had started yeah was like trying to get into the wrestling game um okay and so like they were like oh man everything fell apart for us we fucked up this convention super hard we're gonna cancel one of our hotel rooms richard you can stay with this pro wrestler friend of ours okay and so i was like i went out that night i met some new people had a fun time came back to the room uh (laughs) <laughs> this wrestler who was like a nice guy he was he was sleeping on the floor so that i could have the bed which i thought was really lovely of him oh very kind but yeah. he did have the tv he was asleep tv on was at full volume and uh troy was playing everyone's favorite film and so i turned off the tv and he just sits bolt upright like a don't wake daddy board game and goes i need that to sleep i was like yep cool i'm so, sorry <laughs> well, that goes back on <laughs> Oh shit! Sorry, boom. <laughs> Fuck. Do I sleep tonight? I don't, I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> but you know, I was like, I was. I don't like to think of myself as that wide-eyed, like Steven Spielberg character, like taking off my hat to look at how tall a building is. But like, I, I was a rube from the sticks. Like, I showed up to an American convention from New Zealand with like no. Now, was that your first experience with an American con? And if so, let me just say I'm sorry. Jeez. <laughs> Fuck. Like, I've I've done a bunch of cons since then. They do not normally go like that. Like, they are they are a fun <laughs> time. Um, but, oh, boy, that was kind. Like, and also, when you don't know where you're going, everyone just yells at you. Like, yeah. it's, I, I'd never been to America before. So I went yeah. from, like, tiny little place to giant, and, like, as far as I was aware, all of America was just San Diego Comic Con. Like I went from the airport to the con, was there for four days, went back to the airport and back home. So I was like, I guess that's what America's like. People yell at you all the time. Oh yeah, cool. no, no, it is. I, I did that in twenty nineteen, my first SDCC ever, finally. And you know, we were lucky enough with my boy Clep shot out. We were finding the same parking every day. Mm-hmm. But we, we had to stay an hour away to get a, a, a low cost, you know, B and B. And we were staying there until past midnight. The cosplay after midnight is amazing. <laughs> the clubs, the parties. I don't know. Did you get to enjoy all of that? Can you tell me about your SECC experience? I mean, because for real, I think that that's a, at least every combo fan needs to experience that once in their life. Oh, yeah. Like, I've had some very good experiences there. I have had, like... There is a magical energy that hits you that will just keep you awake all night. Having yeah, it will. In life. But I um, was driving home drunk as fuck on the highway at 3 a.m. That my boy one day, you know, that one of the nights, it was like a Saturday night. He got in the car. He goes, Al, you got to drive. I'm tired. I said, don't worry. Even though I'm fucked up, I got you. He goes, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I got you. Bro, I must have been doing a buck 20 on that highway. I got I got to that place that was an hour away and a half far. He woke up, looked at his clock. He goes, damn, we got here fast. I'm like, bro, you were sleeping. Don't ask. <laughs> you are not the hero of that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. Bro, I've never seen an empty highway, though, before. Here I am in San Diego on an empty highway at midnight. I come from New York. There's not an empty highway at midnight in New York. You feel me? No, I, see, I've, like, I've had some very good times there. I've, I, I mean, I've. Well, I parked in front of a weed dispensary all weekend, not realizing while I was looking for weed. Like an asshole, all I had to do was pick <laughs> my head up instead of rush to the con. I was like, oh shit, the last day. And my boy just shakes his head and laughs at me. He goes, you know, I noticed, but I didn't tell you on purpose to see if you would notice. <laughs> I've had, like, there's also something weird about Comic Con where, like, yeah, you, you will go to sleep at like 7 a.m. and then you'll be back on the show floor by 10 and just feel fine. Yeah, bro, that was us. I think yeah. that weekend between that Thursday and Sunday, we probably slept five hours that mm-hmm. whole weekend. Yeah, and somehow you just kind of like 
I think you just feed off everyone else's power yeah. somehow. It's amazing. Well, I mean, I'm Al Mega Weapon. I got the power. My boy was not that on the plane. And I'm, I'm also a nervous flyer. So you know I didn't sleep on the plane on either way. So I was even awake more hours. <laughs> I, so he's I, like, Al, calm the fuck down. and Just fall asleep. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> everyone everyone always gets tired everyone's always like i wish uh, i can't wait for this con to be over by day three i'm like i want there to nah. be a fourth day i want to do like i i love selling books like i absolutely love selling books it's, it's, okay it's just, let me ask you your technique are you um, one of these people that sit behind the table or do you stand in front of your table saying yo check this out i stand behind the table i never sit down i Damn. like if no one's talking to me, I will be dancing. Not well. Um, <laughs> but I like, I got to keep the energy going. I got to keep some Thank movements. So people get like, they look over, what's that moving? Oh, look, there's a really pretty book. And I have gotten like, you know, I, I have, I've learned the, 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 the spiel for each of my titles, yeah. like in a way that I can make it still feel like it's like so, fresh and new as if I'm saying it to a person for the first time. Like I've got that shit down. Love it. Love it. And talking about a pretty book, let's talk about this project. I mean, you've done many projects, but right now there is the project that's running an actual print that you turned from a webcomic, if I understand correctly. No, right? no, not yet. It's no. It's, so it's it's. I launched it two weeks ago as a webcomic. I've got so many books in print at this point, and I have been going nuts uh, during COVID because like there's no conventions, you know. Um, I know, I know. And, and I mean, wait, uh, wait, wait. So you said there's nothing now in your area coming up. I mean, you got to travel, bro. Go, it's go, kind of hook up with Fan Expo. They'll take care of you. It's You're starting. An amazing it's like, I actually, I got uh, Fan Expo Vancouver reached out to me two days ago. I'm like, hey, do you want to be a guest? I'm like, well, that's two weeks. Yes, ago. yes. Like, look at, that. Look at that. I didn't even know that, folks. I'm happy. Good. Because they but, know quality when they see it. But it's like, it's it's because of like all of this. And I've got, I for the past 10 years, I've kind of accidentally only had books like all ages or kids books released. Yeah, and I do a whole range of different things. It goes things. accidentally. <laughs> like, like just, it's what it. it's what publishers kept buying from me, basically. Well, but you were just doing things. Yeah, listen, if you have multiple scripts and that's what they buy, that's fine. But you know, yeah. this. I mean, I love this cover and this cover. Goddamn, bro. I mean, I know it's a donut and all, but geez, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this is a perfectly innocent three fingers yeah. hole. <laughs> <laughs> bro. When they saw it, and I see that your humor and everything behind it, said you are one funny mother, bro. I, I love it. So oh, I, talk like, to me about Haunted Hill. Talk to us about. Okay, Haunted so Hill, so just over a year ago, I was like, I had two days off between two books, and I thought I just need to make something new because I go mad when I have any free time, and so I wrote and drew this little six-page sequence in two days, just about this woman. Uh, her Uber cancels and she gets a ride home. And I just wanted to kind of create this like sense of, oh, when you're 35 and you get in a car full of 20 year olds, your your night is going to be terrible. I didn't want to tell the rest of the story. It was just like imply it, lying, figure out her way. And then uh, my the the new project I was meant to start, the notes didn't come through from the editor, so I just kept oh, going. Okay. And suddenly, in like a week, I had a first issue drawn, and it's this weird looking book. Like like that cover is like digital coloring it's hand drawn but it's digitally colored and rendered and all that nice shit the internals are like are i just call them internals the interiors <laughs> you know like all up in the guts of the book <laughs> oh talking about being up in the guts of something this person is just pulling out their wedgie on, on this donut on these <laughs> yeah these I'm, I'm very proud of these covers i feel like they, they're the no, hardest bro. thing to come up with like finding that balance between like it's vaguely grotesque but you can't quite put your finger on why my brother please tell me i could buy these donut undies on your website bro no you you cannot um i will sell you the original pair though <laughs> what is, i love this motherfucker he, he's funny bro so um, and, and look at this cover though i mean this goes again i'm just going to keep showing the sense of mm -hmm. humor behind everything i'm going to show some of the interiors based on what you sent me but this is like yeah, an so awesome it's, cover it's, and look at it. Oh shit. What are they squashing here, bro? Every time I every time I saw this cover, I actually had to grab myself and say, ooh. Is that yeah. the intention? Because you're making me say, ooh, looking at the cover even now. Like, damn. Exactly. That's exactly the intention. You bastard, bro. You're hurting me every time. <laughs> Great want, cover, I want, though. I want them to feel visceral, you know? Jesus, um, yo. And those combat boots, those are steel toe. Them motherfuckers hurt, son. Yep. 
Yep, they they crush your teeth. <laughs> um, there's like it's it, there's a there's a joke in issue I think nine um, where there's there's long story short, but there's a, a there's a, a guy who's mad. This is Eva here, the, this woman, the, the pink lady here, is Eva. She's a 35 year old who's just moved back to Hollywood. Uh, her wife got a really good job at a museum that she couldn't turn down. Um, okay. And so now they're like living back where Eva grew up. Well, and, she doesn't want to be apparently just like similar to you being back in New Zealand, I would suppose. Right? <laughs> well, it's, it was, I, I wrote it because like I'd been away because of COVID. I got, you know, I, I, my, my husband's Canadian and we got separated by by like all the lockdowns. Um, no way. Well, so, like, what does your husband do then for a living? He, he's he's retired. OK. Yeah, see, I, as I say, like, my first crush, Grandpa Munster. I have stuck with it, that age <laughs> range. So you, you stuck with the narrative. You like the you like the, 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 the mature gentleman. My, right? my husband looks like an elderly Ned Flanders. Or, like, if, if like, Robert Crumb and Morris Sendak went down a slide too fast together. That's Please don't hard. tell me he talks like Ned, too, bro. He, he does. Never... He's Canadian, so he does say things. Like, <laughs> like, he'll say, golly. He will, he'll... <laughs> If so, I say something, shout out your hubby. Shout out your hubby. Since you're talking about your hubby, shout out your hubby, bro. What, what what's his name? And a big shout out to your man right here. His, his name is Ray, and he's wonderful. <laughs> he's the absolute. A big man. shout to Ray, bro. You see that, yo? He's over here blushing right now that he guys to shout you out that I'm forcing him. You know, well, th thank you for uh, hanging out with Richard and supporting his creativeness because we have an amazing book here that we need that we're talking about. He, so. Now, now Ray does appear. He's got a very distinctive balding pattern, and he does appear on page four of issue one, well, uh, rimming funny. someone. Um, so proud of that moment. Um, he like so this this Ooh. this. You know, I, I was missing. I, I, I ended up uh, coming up here to Canada and then couldn't get back to Hollywood, which is my favorite place in the whole world. And uh, I just started going a bit nuts. So I started writing this like book that is just all about very specific parts of Hollywood. Um, and I don't know. I just I just love the play. It makes me so happy to feel like I'm there again. I'll I'll I'll, yeah. I'll go on like uh, Google Maps and like find where my old house was or like uh, specific stores and things and just like the make memories, sure bro. It's it, it it just makes me feel better to live in that place again. And 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 now that things are opening up, I can start kind of going back there more often. And I still have I have an office down there at the the first ever mall. Um, and, well, you mean first ever mall? When like, did it open? Uh, 1926, I think. Okay, it has the only mall, bro. It was, it was. Um, it's called Crossroads of the World. It's actually like eight buildings. Seven of them are different architectural styles from around the world, and then the middle yeah. one is oh, basically a replica really? of a cruise ship. It's very cool. Oh, um, dope, man! Tell me, there's a comic shop in there. There is. There is not. There's like. There's. It's. It, it's, it's kind of. It fell, into, it fell into disrepair, and like now it's broken down. It's fuck. Like this place is jacked up. So um, how about we buy it and we make that like, the ultimate comic book mecca? I would love that. I would like Could that. Can you imagine that, that, that idea? The cruise ship shaped building would be a very good comic store. Yeah, what? Could you imagine a cruise ship building at the comic store and then we use the rest of the buildings to do cons every week yeah. to celebrate like creators from all over the world. Every week an international comic con. As long as I can still keep my like weird office just to make comics in, and you could you could keep the weirdest office yeah. you want to keep, my brother. There is a lighthouse. There. There's an office. There is an. There office you go. I'll house. give you the lighthouse. Don't you want to take the lighthouse over, bro? And then you can start shining the light. There you go. Alan Moore is in the building, folks, and you just follow him. <laughs> that thing doesn't have. A he wouldn't like that very much, but hey. Mm. I dig it. But, but talk to me about these characters, and you know, I, I, this is all you. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at this coloring. I, I see black and white, but not so much really, because you throw in so many different shades of color within a very black and white spectrum, which I'm a big fan of. But I actually like that you throw kind of these different colors within the black to kind of pop. Is that intentional? Like, you know, yeah. what's the so purpose here? Look the, at this. Um, oh, dope. I know that like so much of this, the story is just like, like the whole, the whole first six issues is just Eva trying to get home. And it should be a 10 minute okay. drive. But she's in a car full of twenty year olds. So drama happens and it takes all night. And they end oh. up going to like a trampoline park and those emo MFers at twenty, stop judging us. Judging I'm not us look, look, live. That, that, that's exactly what I was doing. Like, look, right before <laughs> I know COVID, right before the lockdown, I was walking home from, from my office and this car pulls up behind me and goes, Hey Mark. And I went, Yeah, and I jumped in the car. And they're like, You're not Mark. I was like, That is true. Where are we going? And 
I ended up going on this like wild adventure with these people because someone had like nude picture or nude like a sex video of their friend and they were going to go and like get revenge and i thought they meant like go into the files so i went on this adventure with them and taught them how to break into a house you jumped into someone's random car yeah never like <laughs> you, you gotta look at everything like what's gonna lead to the best adventure Yo, my, I, I hope you, I hope you're like packing some shit just in case, mother, you motherfuckers trying to play around. <laughs> no, I, 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 I usually fall back on the if I cry enough, they'll leave okay. me alone. <laughs> you know what? You know, you know, not, not to kind of fit into the stereotype. I am Puerto Rican, but I always do carry a blade, so you know, I'm just be forewarned. <laughs> I know that, like, if I carried a blade, I would like put my hand in my pocket and be like, "Oh, beans, I cut my hand off." Like, <laughs> oops. No nah, man, I butterfly mean, knives. I like that the most. I, I learned. Uh, I had someone teach me how to use that, man. And ever since, bro, let me tell you, bro, there they, they ain't no better flicker of a motherfucking butterfly knife than Almega. I what did I get? I'm gonna do it. I cut my arm on the fridge last week, so. Oh damn! <laughs> you yeah. said on the fridge. I'm I was like, pulling out some chicken. I don't know what the hell. I, me. I really was. <laughs> <laughs> That shit clawed you. It said, be vegan, motherfucker. I don't know what happened. Like, I think it was, you know, like the rubbery bit. Chicken, I feel like maybe it caught no. my skin or something. I have a tattoo no. of myself. The soul of that chicken was talking to you and it said, be vegan. Yeah. It's not my vegan. daughter is trying to convince me to this day. And I tried a vegan restaurant. I mean, it was good. But my body was acting funny to totally natural food. It was like, holy shit. I feel like, like vegan food would be really good if it had meat in it. <laughs> I think that's you know, listen. I basically ate a vegan shepherd's pie. I'm like, where's the ground beef? I, I you know, I I felt like being one of those people acting like a Medea. I wish I had a purse and just pull out some ground beef to throw in there. <laughs> you, know I mean? you don't need a purse, just put it in your pockets. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, hold on, bro. This is Al Mega. He always carries a blade. Here's Richard. He always carries some hamburger. Right, right. Yeah, you know what? He got some ground beef on him for the vegan spots. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they're gonna hate us right now. <laughs> they, they. I mean, look, look. If people want to be vegan, absolutely go for it. Right I know it's better for you. My daughter is vegan, and I love her. You know, it's expensive to, to the eat fresh, organic. All the time. That's the whole thing. They want to tell you eat fresh, but that price is higher. Yeah. Let me tell like, you, and it's a shame that, that they make natural foods. You know, even like again, they make us pay for water nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a free resource. <laughs> Look at the, that 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 joke, and I think it's in Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. There's a sign that says mm. like tacos a dollar or fresh a dollar twenty five. Shout out to John Vasquez right there, legendary book, bro, legendary. How did you get your eyes on that? Was it in New Zealand? Yeah. So when I was um when I was like sixteen, uh. I decided, like, this is, I didn't have the internet, okay? this is, At 16? You didn't have yeah. internet at 16? We didn't what have, year are we talking about? This would have been, like, 2001, or maybe late 2000. And um, you still didn't have internet out there? No. Like, we had, no, like, New Zealand had the internet. I didn't. Like, you didn't, we, okay. We had a computer with Windows 3.1 on it. Like, oh, shit. Like, I, I, always, dogs, bro. I, I always make the joke, like, like I think it was in, in uh, whoa. It, every time people are like, it's been 25 years since Windows 95 came out, and I'll be like, yeah, and 17 years since my family got it. <laughs> Damn, um, you still have it, no? But <laughs> I mean, it, it was a solid OS. I'll give it. That. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if my mother still had Windows 95. <laughs> <laughs> like, just to give to give like more of the bring it back to my mommy. Um, I was in a pharmacy and I saw some Vicks vapor rub, and I was like, "Damn, they changed the Vicks vapor rub logo. That's weird." And then uh, someone was like, no, they haven't. That's what it's always looked like. I was like, nah, that's bullshit. So I went home and I got my bottle of Vicks Vapor Rub that I brought with me from New Zealand. <laughs> that I have like, still been, because you never run out of it. Like, you know, it's just. For yeah, that's it. Don't run out. That, that That's the forever product. You, you know, you, you get that thing is passed down from your great parents. Bro. This, this bottle, this like container of it had expired in 1978. <laughs> I was born in 1985. <laughs> and this is the bottle my mother had used like throughout our childhood, and I and had, it like, still worked though, right? I'm sure. I mean, it's I mean, it does nothing. It's just smelly Vaseline. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's the menthol, bro. That's all you need. I got like tricked for a little while into putting it on Q-tips to make my ears feel real clean. It just hurts, 
and I'm a I, I used to be a firm believer in like, well, if it hurts, it's doing something. It's not. It's just no, it's not. You just That's only for weightlifting, folks. <laughs> no pain, no gain, and weightlifting, not anything else. If you put something in your ear, that shit hurts. Stop sticking it in yep. your ear, please. <laughs> Tiger bomb that also hurts in your ear. That hurts. Oh, what? Yeah, it hurts real bad. Don't do that. I was doing it like once a week for a bit. I heard a joke. One of my friends one day, he said he was the, uh, like in, in the uh, Navy and, and he had put like Tiger Bomb in somebody's jock strap. Oh, no. And, yeah. And, and all of the guys just basically just watched him put it on. And within two minutes, this guy's screaming. <laughs> like, 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 if you want to watch your friend put their underwear on, it feels like you're going to a lot of effort. Just ask. Yeah, I mean, I know, but they, they, they're just messed up people. Hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, just, hey, hey, Kevin, Kevin. Yeah, me and the, me and the buds. We want to watch you put your underwear on. Is that cool? Is that normal? Yeah, yep. here's a jock strap while we're in the locker room. All of a sudden. Hey, hey full warning. Wait your your uh, your jock strap there is a little slimier than usual. You might notice, but don't even don't even trip. That's totally fine. That's a normal thing we have. It's the navy. I don't know. Like. <laughs> Come on. Talking about slimy, why is there a pink tongue coming out of a wall here? What is this? Or is that? Or am I mistaken? <laughs> no, that is. That is. There's. Um. So, oh yeah. So the re jumping all the way back, like the um, all the all, I, I knew that this was going to be a story about like people in a car okay. going somewhere, and I was like, well, let's have like she Eva talks too much. She's always telling stories. She's always oversharing. Um, so let's have all of that stuff happen in color and like go really surreal with things. And then th this is this guy, uh, Junior, who they've picked up, who sees this mural of a dumpling, which is on the wall of uh, a, a Chinese restaurant at uh, Sunset and Bronson. It's really there. It's a really creepy looking mural. The tongue comes out the wrong side of the teeth. Um, <laughs> and so I thought it'd be fun to have him just like freak out and imagine himself getting like eaten by this giant dumpling for a little bit. Holy shit, bro! Dumplings, bro! Now you're making me fear dumplings. I mean, this like this book is. Oh it's man, look how sick this is! <laughs> like very grounded, very real characters having like emotional conversations and dealing with whatever. I dig it. But also big surreal crazy energy, like it's bombastic. You know, there's there's ghosts, there's aliens, there's like kid logic to things. There's this whole uh, subplot where this this guy who Eva was friends with when she was a kid is mad at her. Because uh, before she left, she changed the password to his treehouse. And he hasn't been able to get into it for like 20 mm. years. Oh, wow. And and everyone's like, can you just open the door? He's like, no, there's a password on it. And sure enough, like eventually she has to go and, 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 and whisper the password for the door to be able to be unlocked again. Mm. You know, mm. it's, it's, and I, I enjoy that kind of like. Like the the reason in my book that Hollywood is weird Oof. is because there's a guy full of ghosts underneath it who's slow, like, that's slowly been leaking out. And I want you to talk to me about this page because again, I'm a person that loves panels, you know, within a page. This is not even a spread, but just one page. I mean, why this type of panel work? This is amazingly done. So though. this was um the homeless guy lives at this trampoline park called Perfect Bounce. Um, that got like that never actually opened, mm -hmm. and so they they go there, and uh, this is I decided to have the panels for a few pages match the layout of all the trampolines and the padding. Oh, dope! And I thought it'd be cool, and because like I wanted, like I love, I love doing like really dense conversations that are all in little pieces, but you know, quite often you'll see people they'll draw like here are two characters standing dynamically, and they're you know like superheroes, and then they'll have like thirty word balloons each going back and forth. I'm like, well, that sucks. Um, so I like to break it up into these little pieces. I just did a, a, a page in uh, issue 11 or 12 uh, where uh, Eva is brushing her teeth and on the phone. And so there's all these bubbles coming out of her mouth. And so I have all of the um, all of the panels become the bubbles. And there's like 27 panels on this page. And it's this like little clipped conversation between her and her wife. Love it, man. Oh, damn. Look at the coloring on this. Is there something we haven't mentioned yet? <clears throat> Right? I mean, here you are writing, drawing, doing all this stuff. But, you know, what else is going on with you? You know, so people kind of are aware of that. You know, you created this all as comic books, but what else is going on? Oh, so this is this is the, the bit where you find out that I'm blind all along. And I really am. Like, so I have this eye can see about 3% of what a normal eye can see. And then this one's just full on dead. Um, really? It's dead? Yeah. Um, wow. it, it wobbles around. Like, so there's... 
one really common condition where you get these cracks in the back of your eyeballs. Uh, and then there's one really un unusual and rare condition where your brain doesn't go into sleep patterns. And I have both. And so... Wait, wait, cracks... wait, wait, wait. You're fucking me up. Wait, 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 wait. So what do you mean sleep patterns? What do you mean by that? So like your brain releases chemicals in cycles. So you have like melatonin, serotonin, <laughs> dopamine, that kind of stuff, right? And it's yeah. I'm, I'm explaining this in a very simple way, but like, or trying to, but, but you know, it's more complicated than this, but this is the basics of it. You're, you're meant to release those at different times. So your body has like a rhythm and, and, yeah. and like, so it knows when it's day and when it's night, you know, like if you, you, yeah. you know, if it's nighttime outside without looking, you know, I, uh, I don't have that. My body, <laughs> my, my brain is releasing these chemicals all the time, all together. So I'm technically always in fight or flight mode. And so what? I can't go into like, I can't go into like stage two sleep essentially. So you uh, stay on the stage one sleep the whole time. Yeah, so I can I I like I I'll, I'll go to bed for an hour. How and do half. you function? Um, I have a lot of like, I, I like I'll just kind of power down for an hour and a half or so every now and then. Like really, I mean, and what's your, like, but give us examples because listen, brother, I understand how important sleep is, especially to a creative mind. I get. So, I mean, when you talk power down, what's power down? Like I, I will go to bed because I think it's really important to go and like lie in a bed, but like. But your body it, does tell you when you should rest, no? No, not really. No, They're crazy. No, like, and crazy. I have a, I have a whole other complicated <clears throat> thing going on with my, my vagus nerve is all fucked up because every, okay, let me overshare. Every day when I need to poop, I get really sleepy and pass out, and I don't know why. Trying to figure Only, that out at the moment. What? Yeah, wow. I pass out when I need to poop. That's so well. Is it the energy involved, especially with the lack of sleep? I mean, no, it's I like like that. But like that's my warning signal. Like, hey, Richard, you need to go to the bathroom now. It's because my head starts falling down. What the fuck? Yeah, what? I know. And doctors just look at me like I'm a crazy person. So I'm trying to figure that one out at the moment. Nah, well, they shouldn't look at you that way because instead they should just look into shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I yeah. hate <laughs> that. I hate when motherfucking doctors just fucking judge. Like, mm -hmm. listen, somebody's telling you this is my fucking problem. Fucking listen and learn. Maybe there's something new, or maybe yeah. someone's experienced it and you just haven't fucking you know lined them up yet. Yeah. So, um, like I will. Fucking doctors, bro. The other, the other part of it is that when I do, um, you know how when when you first wake up, you're a little bit like, oh, you know. Nah. Okay. Like you go like I a don't little know. Bit to start with like I go from like asleep to just awake and I'll get up and walk around. You like there's there's no there's no transitional period in between. Okay. For me. There is none for me either when I wake up. My wife bugs is bugged out that I could get up and just function like I've mm. been awake for the past three hours. Yeah. Uh, when I get up, it's like it's full on like uh, cosmic boom. I'm on. Yeah. There is no sluggishness. So I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> if it but isn't, yeah, so, great. So if it is, you know, let me know because I wake up like boom, like I'm ready. Well, it might be a problem if you wake up if your heart is racing. Then I would get that checked out because apparently that can be a big problem. Well, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if your heart yeah. is racing when you wake and up. And I'll be I, honest, uh, I I do kind of wake up with a fast heartbeat because I'm like you ready to go. See a doctor about that, like for serious. Really? Yeah that that one that that can be serious. Um, you fucking scaring me, bro. Sorry. <laughs> I tell okay. scary stories. Um, I don't but understand, so, but thank you for sharing that. I really will take that into consideration because I do wake up on a boom level. I do not wake up ever sleepy. I'm ready to work. I wake so, up at five a.m. Mind you. Yeah. So when so when my um when I was like a fetus and my eyeballs were all growing and stuff and they had these cracks in the back of them, the crack like my brain didn't go into like a sleep pattern, so the healing part didn't happen. So the, the cracks got. So this is since birth. This cha yeah. this challenge. Yeah. So like oh, my wow. optic nerve is just not attached right, essentially. And oh uh, my but God. my brain goes at a pretty like I process images really fast, and so I can see tiny little bits all over, and I put it. Okay, all explain that. So what are you seeing? Is this shadows or or, or you know? Like kind of explain to me it's, that because it's like, I, I'm, I'm just curious. It. Sorry for the questions. Just, no, no, it's it's, it's fine. It's it's like I can see. I can see. Imagine if you could see everything pretty badly, but okay. also in tiny pieces, and your brain had to put it together. Like it's like seeing. Uh, it's like seeing a blurry uh, jigsaw puzzle one piece at a time, but oh, real wow. fast. So you're always kind of constantly putting a puzzle together in your yep. brain. 
and then yeah. you have these other issues so your mind is always racing yeah Dude, and so i just i just have insane. to work all no wonder you've produced so much you know why and you're scaring me too because um damn you're making me think about this because honestly i kind of do the same thing i kind of focus on work a lot mm. i mean a lot it's because work is the best it's yeah it does it, it takes me work. out but i kind of do a lot mm. you know, I can't, making me um, think. and then you know even when they wake up the first thing i'm thinking about is what i gotta do i get really uh like pretty depressed when i'm not working um if I like me too, I get, I personally get very anxious. Yeah. Yeah. And I start, I start like really like catastrophizing. I pace. I start mm -hmm. pacing and yo, can we watch something? <laughs> yeah. Please. Damn. Yeah, like, thank you. You're making me kind of analyze myself in this conversation with you because, you know, as creators, both it's like, damn, we take a lot of time in creation, but we also mm -hmm. like kind of fixate on things that could be, you know, leading to some issues. Yeah, bro. For real. Well, it's like I, I finished, wow. um, I ended up making 12 issues of Haunted Hill in my spare time last year and then oh, started putting it out online this year. And like, I'm doing six pages a week online. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I'm still, I, I've got five other graphic novels coming out this year. Five? Um, yeah. Damn, my dude, you stay busy, son. It's going to be a big year. Um, one of them's a reprint, though. One of them's a reprint of the, the of comics from New Zealand. But like, I put, you know, like if you go to my website, there's like, there's about 2,000 pages of comics there just for free. Um, and then Haunted Hill will be six pages a week. But like, I finished uh, issue 12 like two weeks ago. And then the next thing to do was I had to make, make these two eight page pitches for, uh, yeah. for the publisher who wants stuff from me. And then I have to do this eight page thing for an anthology. And I started getting really down. And I realized it was because I didn't have a big project. Okay. And like, Everything I was yeah. doing was like, well, this will be finished in two days, and everything was in these little like chunks. And I just, it, yeah, it's, it's really hard. But as soon as I'm actually drawing again or writing again or whatever, I'm not thinking about it until I until I pause until so I take man, the afternoon off. You know, you just, just talking as as you know, people that put things together. Can, you, do you think this is kind of because of the COVID related lifestyle that we've been living? Yeah, I where do. it's I like you know, here we are trapped. You know, please give us something to do. <laughs> well, I think it's that like you know, when when COVID hit, we all thought like we can see the end of this. It's going to be over by like X I mean, X. Yeah, we know, idiots were saying April. Smart people were saying we October, hoped. and then like October came and went. I mean, I and Joe Rogan says you know to do what you do. <laughs> Fuck that guy. And that's um, another topic. Yeah, I know. the number of people who were saying things like, "Hey, we don't, you know, if we if we have a Zoom call every week, we'll do that twenty six times, and then it'll be done," and that kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. we so we had we were still doing that very human thing of building towards something, and then when that kind of faded, and we realized we're in this for a long time and an unknown long time. Uh, oh. that serotonin boost that people get or that like that emotional high that you get from from working on something big or from going towards something big is mm. gone and all we've replaced it with are these like hey let's you know what we'll do we'll have a party on zoom well yeah. okay and that'll cheer me up for an hour but it's not lasting it's it's you know it's uh, it's the yeah. i always say that like getting really good news is the same feeling as like taking any kind of upper like you get yeah. a real rush you feel like there's too much blood in your body and you're energized by it and it drives you forward if you do that with actual good news and excitement and like something changing in your life it lasts if you do it with a drug it tends to be pretty hollow and sad yep. after a long time and it's why i understand like when you know getting good news is addictive um, well, I, it I, is. I mean, I this is why people this, check their phones every five minutes. I, oh, I did somebody retweet me? Did somebody fucking love what I did? People yeah, well, get hooked it's, on it's, it's that. exactly that, right? And like, I'm, I'm, you know, it's why I'm so glad that I'm so unpopular on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love this dude. He's so funny. Um, but you know, it's, it's. I, I really understand why people who like live and work in the creative industry. And I say live and work because you live this. You, you're doing it all of the time. Even when you're not doing it, it's it's there. Yeah, um, man. You, if, if things go well for you for, you know, if I get if I get something really big one day, that's awesome. If I get some big good news two days in a row, 
I know that that third day when I don't is going to break me. So yeah. I'll be like, I thought, I thought this was a pattern. I thought expectancy, it was yeah, yeah. And it's like, the human brain, right? We know we yeah. get accustomed to things so quickly, but you know, to release a habit, it says it's forty six months. God damn! But you know, to get hooked onto a habit is so quick because our mind loves. You know that 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 quick at the t- that that quick. Yes, I love you. Hey, thank you. Endorphin release. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like like now you know we, we don't have anything big to look forward to. It's why so like like with Haunted Hill, I'm like okay, no matter what, like I made this book entirely for me, and I'm put, I'm putting it out for free. I will do a print edition of it at some point. I don't have a plan for it yet, um, but like once I can start doing conventions again, this book will be in print. But like, yeah, man, let's get it in print. People need I to just, see this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. The I just wanted do, to like make sure that I had something going on for a length of time, so it wouldn't be like, "Hey, everyone, go look at my website for this one day." I wanted Should've it to be like, it. "Hey, every week there's going to be something new. I have to do this every week. Love I have it. to get this thing out." And it's it it it's it's keeping me going, honestly. And it really Excellent. is my favorite book I've ever done. Excellent. I gotta ask you something though. Mm-hmm. This, this has kind of been terrorizing me, kind of the whole show. And I think it, it was this very being that made my camera disconnect. Are right, you want to talk about Ronald? Yeah, why is Ronald staring at me the whole show? That motherfucker is creepy right over your right shoulder. He's, he's the weirdest. <laughs> like, I love weird things. I love finding things. And I'm like, hey, it's, 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 not, even, it's, it's not even creepy. that it's weird. It's that, like, that toy is from, like, the 70s. And it's from the 70s, no wonder that shit is like creepy as fuck, bro. Think I can about, see that motherfucker. He's scaring me. Think about like how many people had to say yes. Look at that. Look, look at him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll grab him. Oh, I'll grab him. Oh, shit. Yo, he's big. Think about how many people. Oh, man. He's scary, yes. yo. Like, Yo, Anyone, like so many people could have been like, "Hey, don't do this. Don't make this weird ass Ronald with grimace in his pocket." Why does he have a, oh, wait, grimace is his pocket. Yeah, did he just murder grimace and made him and made him like a velvet pocket on his suit? Oh, nah, bro, nah. <laughs> that is, yo, you need to make an animated film with this MF for like right now. You know, the right, you know, who needs Chucky when you got Ronald? He's, I, I love things like that where it's like there's just, there's no reason this should exist. And I, I, for, for some reason, that makes me want to have it. It's like, um, I'll show you. I have this beautiful framed photo here of, um, this fish. Oh, oh what is that? This is a fish in the bottom of a fountain that's, uh, outside my office. That's a real fish. It's not a real fish. It's an ugly, like, cement fish. A cement? Okay. That um, is weird as fuck, bro. But, like, it's been there since 1926. What? How many people could have at any point been like, hey, take this ugly fish away? And no one did. Yeah. And I love him. Gotcha. Every time I'm there, I will take selfies with that fish. <laughs> I will, like, I will always take people on a tour of my office and be like, come see this fish. It's the last thing on the tour because it's always the best. Too funny. I've- I got to ask you, though, too. What type of award is that? Golden? Is is that a monkey or something? What is that? Oh, it's a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> a lamp. That's just it's just one of. <laughs> I. What the I hell did you find, yo, bro? I you, moved you into buy like some my weird dream shit. house a few years I'm ago. Dig, I'm digging your energy though, cause you buy some weird oh. shit, and this is the thing I would tell my wife, yo, look what homie got right here. I will point that out to me, yo. yo. <laughs> I I I moved into this like absolute dream house a few years ago. Um. Where? Was, where, where, where? This was this was this was in Hollywood, and I just found this Hollywood. magical place. Um, and it was like it was everything I wanted in a house. It felt like weirdly suburban, but very like dangerous at the same time. And like, I, I like the <laughs> griminess of Hollywood, you know. I um, and I, I'll tell you, my favorite thing that ever happened at this house was uh, like early on during COVID, and someone like is walking up my front path. I'm like, you know, so I'm putting my mask on and stuff in my pockets with hamburger to throw at them if I need to. Um, and I, I open the door and they're standing like far enough back and everything. So I'm like a little bit relaxed and they go, Hey, does Johnny disco still live here? Johnny I like, disco. I'm like, I, I want to know everything oh, about that. Guy. Who like, the fuck is Johnny disco? You are blowing my mind. So wait a like, minute. There's so, you had a so Johnny many parts disco. of like, like 
okay, what kind of monster just shows up at a house to be like, hey, does someone live here? Like, don't do that. Like, live in an age where you could always call first or text first, whatever. But, like, this dude just stumbled out of his car and was like, does Johnny Disco still live here? If I knew Johnny Disco, I would never lose track of him. Like Johnny Disco. Uh, now you got me looking thing. up to who the fuck is Johnny Disco. I, I find DJs called Johnny Disco. You, you, you wake up like... You wake up every day, your first thought should be, Wait, what is Johnny Disco doing today? I need to know that, and then I can have my fucking breakfast. Bro, like, I will is... pour my Count Chocula once I know Johnny Disco is okay. Please tell me this is a character in your comics. You got If Johnny Disco does not exist in, he doesn't... in, in, in your universe, it needs to exist. In the fair gray universe right There's, now. There are so many. Let's call it now the fair there are so many people. There are so many people and places like... like there are an endless number of stories in Hollywood. That's why it's my favorite place. Like Love when the it. when the pandemic first hit, and, and all my stories can just start like that. It's either about my mommy or about when the pandemic first hit. But when the pandemic first hit, mom said, "When my the pandemic mom said, happened, <laughs> um, the 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 uh, the gun store started doing deliveries. Pretty the cool gun store. Yep. Hey, but let also, me get a nine millimeter with a with, with a case. But uh, this was uh, at the same shot. time that." like all the courier companies were like, we're not going to require signatures anymore. We're just going to leave things on doorsteps. So uh -oh. suddenly there were a lot of guns on doorsteps. And so suddenly the homeless in Hollywood were super duper armed. And oh, that was a looking wild like thing. Rambo and shit. And like, no one was out. Everyone was like locked away in their houses because of COVID. Also, there was a plague outbreak at the time, which is a whole other You're making thing. me think of like, this is whole RoboCop scene from hmm. Detroit and shit. That was that was the vibe, and I was like, I was walking my like everyone else in my office complex like dipped out as soon as COVID hit. So I was like, I have this entire place myself. I'm gonna keep going in. And on my way there, I like tripped over, <laughs> I tripped over an AR-15 sticking out of this dude's tent. No, you did not. <laughs> he like sticks his head out, and he's and he's like, oh, you're cool. I'm like, cool, good, <laughs> glad I'm cool. No one's ever said wait, that wait, before. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You you tripped over a fucking gun mm -hmm. while you were walking down an alley in fucking Hollywood. I tripped over like 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 uh <laughs> oh, Cherokee and Sunset outside the 7 Eleven. I tripped over from Hangar 15. Son, get out. Yo. It was it was like but you know it was also this was the same day that on my way home, um, like you know, everyone was using the bird scooters back then, and then everyone he stopped because the everyone thought like touching anything <laughs> would like kill you. And so no one was collecting them. And I don't know if you know this, they're called birds because they chirp when their battery is dying. Yeah. So this one night when no one had collected them in to charge them for three fucking days, all across the city, bird scooters started screaming. And there was just this echo because there were no cars on the street. No one was out. And there was just this echo throughout Hollywood. Of, oh, 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 shit. Fucking talk about Alfred Hitchcock, right? <laughs> magical. Absolutely magical. You sort of recorded um, that shit, bro, and used it as a sound effect. But you know, like anyway, so, so I, I the the reason I have the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, I love it. Right, we we went around this whole circle to talk about this awesome lamp. <laughs> so I, moved, I moved into this like this perfect house, and I had this like the biggest bedroom I'd ever had, and I was like, I need to choose a look for this bedroom. I want to look like nouveau riche vampire. I want to have absolutely no taste, but look like I have money. <laughs> and I was like, and so I just typed into into the old Google machine. I typed "gold monkey lamp," and Get I found. Out of here. So I actually have four of these things in like different. Four, orders. damn, bro! There you go. He's feeding the economy. You know, you create it. You're making monkey lamps. He needs more gold ones. And like it's it's weird actually. Like I I have them all around the house here, That's and crazy. then. I found there's like you, a knockoff at a home sense store now. It's really I, I, I need to know right now what have your friends said? Has anybody walked in and just said anything kind of that made you laugh? Um, I feel like at this point, you know, when you're walking into a place where you know there's the Ronald and there's the there's the that, there's that the creepy Ronald. motherfucker. Yeah, I ain't gonna say nothing. Like, okay, I expect this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like this this office that I'm in here is actually it's it's a converted haunted house that I built for my wedding. No um, way, and I love it, man. I love the black paint. You got some graffiti on the wall. I can't wait to move the fuck out of where I am and have my man cave where I'm gonna do some awesome shit like you. Oh, see, I see. I have like um, we my my husband breeds Great Danes, so we have a lot of dogs in the house. 
so I have this is the quiet place, and I keep it chilled as well because I don't like I don't like to be warm ever. Um, so in summer it gets a little uncomfortable, but like most of the time I can keep it at around forty just degrees. Throw it, just throw an AC in that motherfucker, one of those portable ACs, and you'd be good. But you you could have it in that nice New Zealand weather, at, you know, twenty degrees, and you'd be fine. No, I want to. I want to. Like my goal is to freeze to death one day. Oh, you want to you want to look like Jack Nicholson at the end of the motherfucker the shining? But, but I I like I think I made that too public as information. <laughs> you know, I this, so I got this email from someone who wanted to like they're like I know you want to freeze to death so you wouldn't be uncomfortable if this went wrong but I've always wanted to see how cold I can make a person. I can give you seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you give me a week of your time. And I'm like, what? No, you seem like a murderer you seem like you want to exactly murderers. they want to kill you for three quarters of a million dollars <laughs> you know what they'll keep it in the back because if you get so many ill you think, you know what why not here i'm ready <laughs> leave and just leave all my money to ronald <laughs> here i left it to the fucking doll just put the whenever he whistles just you know it depends on the on the uh strength of the squeeze that's who it goes to oh so you do decibel, like decibel, like type shit, yeah. you know, gay yeah. thing. <laughs> I, or like, it's, it's like the beginning of a Dragon Ball Z tournament, you know, like everyone has to go and like punch the thing to see how powerful they are. Oh, shit, yeah. right. Whoever takes off the head of Ronald first gets <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the head of Ronald. Oh, he has shit, displeased bro. the Burger what? King. And it's got to be a hobby that says, okay, you are the winner. I have knighted you. I mean, we have, we do have to think about the fact that like Ronald, at some point, like he's got grimace in his pocket. But if you've ever seen original, no, but that looks too crazy. He did he really fucking shrink grimace and make him a fucking pocket? Because grimace used to have four arms. You know this, right? You're blowing my mind. Wait a minute. I love this podcast with you today. Original you, 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 grimace. Original. I I never. Wait, wait. When was this? Oh, this was shit, like, you're fucking me up. I gotta find it. If I find this picture, Grimace for honor. Yeah, look, just just type in original Grimace. You will see a, a monster. <laughs> so when did you see this? Because I've only oh. seen. Oh shit! Yep. yep. Like Bro. a four armed milkshake stealing demon. It, it, it is. You better keep away from my milkshake, motherfucker. Come and so on. I like to think that Ronald like sliced those arms right off, and those were the source of his evil. And now he's he's like McDonald. That's Lancaster. why he became good. There yeah. you go. For, look, he has four arms. Look, two on his belly. Yeah, but see what? See, that's a friendly purple one. Like there is a nasty like brown and gray one. Well, from... no, no. I got something for you. Don't you worry. I'm like, it's gonna take care of you and your sickness right now. <laughs> Don't you worry. Look at what I found. Ah, it's a pin, bro. Evil Ooh. Grimace enamel pin, and he's holding four milkshakes. A lucky guy. And he still has one hand free. Yep. Oh, and I, I think I found. Oh yes, I found it. Oh my effing god, this is horrible, bro. What? I, I, you know what? I think I'm, gonna, I'm about to have your sleeping problem. <laughs> oh shit, bro! What the fuck is this? This is the creepiest oh. grimace I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, this motherfucker got fries. What is this? Is that's this an that's beautiful. That looks like one of my exes. Oh my god, bro! God bless. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no one really no one tends to to judge like you know they know they're walking into a, a place where i i will buy things because they're bad ideas and i just want to wait a minute people. bro bro i have just found a sample um of a commercial that portrays him with four arms yep and this, this is legit this allows me if it's more than three megabytes i got it I got come on, kiddo. Please make it happen. Otherwise, I'm about to do a screen share because it is fucking me up. Oh yes, look. Hey, wait. Let me take off that banner because you. Hi I'm hiding it. Oh shit, yo! Look. Oh my god, isn't that fucking scary? This motherfucker got six, like seven milkshakes on this motherfucker right now. Oh my god, bro! Why did you do this to me? I'm gonna just be looking nothing up but fucking. Multi-handed grimaces. Here, you want you want me to give you like a real piece of like uh shocking information? 
how like how, how, can I ask how old you are? I am forty six years old, about to be forty. I'm an old man, ladies. Okay, so your your uh, your generation, like your Ronald McDonald, was played by King Moody. Okay. Okay. Yes. I came up in the time of Squire Fidel, but King Moody, who played Ronald on the on the commercials in your day, do you know who his grandson is? No. Paul Bearer from WWE. No effing yeah. way. Like that is a showbiz. Stop junkie. lying. I'm not lying. Isn't that so? Wild? His grandson is Paul Barrow, like the f- iconic manager of The yep. Undertaker. Yep. Rest in peace, too, because Paul passed, man. Yeah. I actually I didn't even know. I'm, I'm working on a wrestling comic at the moment, and I was like looking into his history. I was like, oh, dip. That dude died. You're doing a wrestling <laughs> comic? Talk to me, but what, 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 what's your years of fandom? Because I grew up, you know, obviously with the Hulk Hogan era, but then, you know, I fell in love with the NWO, Steve Austin era, you know. I like I was in it for like it would have been like ninety six through two thousand was when I was just kind of, really okay post NWA and you know, all that stuff. Yeah, like 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 I was NWO, I mean I, I I dipped out before um the the, the death in the ring of uh, Owen? Of, yeah, yeah. Like it was just before that that I kind of dipped out, but like like the whole Undertaker Kane storyline, like yeah. that was my jam. But isn't it great to see Kane being an actor in horror movies now? Yeah, the fuck it's, is it's, the ultimate serial killer. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Like... It's weird, but I like that. You know, yeah, I, I like the fact that at least these um wrestlers, once they're not able to really wrestle, still have an afterlife. And that you know, even though yeah, it's a production to do Vince, you know, mm. but you know they have an afterlife as actors. And now, now look at John Cena, for example, doing Peacemaker, right? Yeah, and like you know, just really just bringing good fashion to the world continuously since his yeah. since his uh, birth. Yeah. So talk to me. What else we got going, brother? With you, what else can we expect, and how soon? Because the book you saw the pages, people. These pages are amazing. And again, you know, he's doing this with with this, you know, and like put quote disability because hey, he ain't no disabled. He, he's doing better work than people that could that could see fully. So so, so there's like there's. 30 pages up so far. There'll be six pages up every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Damn, six pa- Can't you yeah. tease us a little more? Maybe two, put two pages and you just keep stretching the content? Or why do you want to give us six pages? Do you do it on purpose? Um, Each each issue is 18 pages, and I kind of feel like a six-page chunk of story is satisfying. Oh, man. You are so good as a creator to think of us. Like, yeah, let me give you more than just one page a week. <laughs> and um, and then I've got in in March or April, uh, my book Ghost Ghost is coming out. Um, it's okay. a collection of ten short comics. I, I and where is that out. coming out through? Is it through a publisher, crowdfunding? Yeah, that one's uh, that one's through Stack Deck Press, mm. um, and so that'll be available just everywhere. Um, and it's yeah, it's a it's a reprint of some stuff I did in New Zealand about a ghost who struggles with invisibility and loneliness that I started when I was seven. Wow, um, look at this fuck. Damn. Kid. And then uh in May, I think early May, uh book three of my series Black Sand Beach uh will be everywhere. Hey. Uh and that one's through Pixel and Ink, who are a, a, a kids book and, and comic publisher um awesome. out of New York. And then awesome. uh the second book and, and then by the way, Black Sand Beach, it, it's like yeah. A full-on kids horror series. It's like four kids spending their summer at a haunted beach and dealing with all kinds. Uh, of yeah, terror. of course they would do a haunted beach story because yeah. he hates beaches. Apparently, I do <laughs> hate beaches, uh, and it's based on like it's it's based on r- r- a real place uh, that I spent my summers where there's a haunted lighthouse. Right. Um, and then I've got um, uh, Cardboardia book two comes out in I think August or September. That's another kid series about four kids who can travel through cardboard boxes to a world made of cardboard through um, cardboard boxes damn bro if they were in Brooklyn back in the day they would have been dipping in every box and then uh what else oh then i've got um uh blue fox comics in the uk are going to be doing a crowdfunding campaign for my book shed uh shed. With, uh yeah. lucy campagnolo who also co-wrote cardboardia with me shed is a graphic novel about um, a woman who moves to a small town to try and like find a happy ending for her life because she thinks that's what she's meant to do at 28, uh, but discovers Damn, that, like, at 28. Jeez. It's 
yeah, you know, people go through that phase before they're 30 where they're like, I should settle down and figure out what I'm doing. And so she tries, but discovers that like small town politics sucks and there's also a sea monster. Um, oh, damn. And uh, then I'm working on a, a book that I, it's not announced yet, but it's called Four Color Heroes. And it's about uh, two teenage boys who fall in love through a shared fascination with a superhero. Um, and that one will be out next year, but I'm deep in the paint on the work on that one. So and is there any you know inspiration from your life within that book? Uh, honestly, no. Like, okay. like that one is is purely like I I was the I, I never had like a um a teen romance or anything like that. I was always you didn't. okay. No, I had like I had like my fascination with Grandpa Monster. <laughs> that, so, so as you were growing up, you you kept yourself hidden, your true self. No, no, I did. Like no, I, I sort of, good. I never realized. I never like everyone has a big coming out story. I never realized yeah. that I had to. So I just kind of just good started. For you, down. you were just you know you went with just who you were. You didn't need to fucking announce it, right? You did. Yeah, and like I, I have, you. you know, I like I, that I'm, a lot. I respect I, that, bro. I'm bi, but my taste, like my taste in men, is Grandpa Monster, and my taste in women is Kathy Bates. <laughs> So, oh shit! <laughs> like, like one of my 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 earliest. You know what? Kind of... That that that's what Nick Cannon called. Nick Cannon would call you a kangaroo. <laughs> what is that? He says with kangaroos, young men jumping on to older ones. So you know he likes <laughs> older ones so, because he says he likes older ladies. He says so. I'm a kangaroo. If they're cool, as I'm a kangaroo. He goes. Oh, so that see, means I, you're I, a kangaroo. I, I think of of I just I just really want. I want, I just want someone to be obsessed enough with my writing that they'd break my ankles. Ah, oh, shit. God damn, bro. <laughs> ah, where about? Everybody, you hear this fantasy? So any Kathy Bates out there, don't break my dude's ankles, but just, you know, you know, role play, role play with my dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You're just funny, keep a bro. big hammer next to the bed. And <laughs> <laughs> a big rubber hammer, all right? That way you don't break anything, right? <laughs> um... You know, it, it's uh, so I never, I never kind of had to, and then, and then when I was like in my thirties, people started being surprised. Like, like people would know me, and they'd only know like one person who I was seeing, and it would be like a guy, so they thought it was gay, or they'd meet like a girl I was dating, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're straight." And then there always be there'd be all these surprises. So they themselves so like, would be confused. <laughs> I'd be like, "Oh, sorry, I forgot to come out as I, I always refer to <laughs> refer to myself as a straight white gay." <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a hashtag if you've ever heard of one right there, bro. All right, but my, my brother, man, you are an amazing guest, bro. I, I love your energy, your creativity, the fact that, you know, you know, even what you're going through doesn't stop you from being an amazing artist and creator and writer. You're, you're handling your business, so, you know, I like throwing my flowers to creators like you. So, you know, thank you for being brave and bold, you know, sharing of yourself, even within the podcast, like, yeah, yeah. You're brave, man. So God bless you, my brother, because you're really doing your thing, and I only expect the greatest things. I can't wait to see this in some other platform too, outside of comics. Because I see people attaching themselves to this. You're doing something that's great, you know, within the community. You know what I mean? Diversity, just sharing stories, just having fun. It's comic books, you know, yeah. amazing talent behind it. And let me ask you here: if you had, uh, if you could do this, I don't, I, I know a lot of people. Say, oh, comic kids don't do this for that. I understand that. But if they had the opportunity to make more bank, if you could choose your this comic to turn to something else, would you want it to be a TV drama like like live action or go into animation? I don't know. I mean, I always think like if I wanted to make a lot of money, I would have just been a professional basketball player. I mean, yeah, like, but you got skills like that, bro. I mean, I'm no, a butcher. No, no, you, I will have my handprint on your forearms, and you my, would be like my, this my, motherfucker. My fear of heights. Head. My fear of heights stopped me growing tall enough <laughs> to do it. Um. <laughs> I don't have a fear of heights. I have a fear of falling from the height. <laughs> um, no, like I, I've had offers for for TV stuff before, and like I, you know, I, I came up on TV. I love watching TV. Yeah. Um, you know, shows like Doctor Cats and Home Movies and Downtown. God, Downtown was so good. Um, like they were huge inspirations to me. Um. And I would love, you know, I love the idea of of someone taking my stuff and turning it into a show. Yeah. But 
like I wake up every morning and I want to draw comic books. Love it. Love it. You're true to your nature, my kiddo. Love it. You want to keep going what you do. Keep on that grind. Oh, if someone wants to, like, it, it, seriously, if anyone wants to make it a TV show, and I, I will, I will like dip in and like give some like. Tips Let's make it stuff. happen, yo. Yeah, yeah. Like, but yeah, I just, I just, as long as it doesn't get in the way of me continuing to make comics, then I'll be happy. There you go. You know, as, as it shouldn't be, because you mm -hmm. are the creator, and whatever you create for it is only more episodes for the show later on. So at the end of the day, it's like you know they win if they allow you to keep creating anyway. I mean, how shit? How they even say the words aloud when it's your product? You know, mm -hmm. they should let you. This is mine. I'm leasing it to you, motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like. It's, you know, my, for, for about a decade, I made my entire living from a series called Blastosaurus about a crime fighting triceratops. Crime now, fighting triceratops. Hey, I love that shit. Look at you, bro. Are you a big you, dinosaur like, fan? It, it, Is that your favorite dinosaur? Um, no, I don't, I don't like dinosaurs. He said, I don't like the motherfucker. That guy's okay. I just, um, <laughs> I just had a stuffed triceratops that I cuddled since I was a kid. So I was like, oh. I might as well turn him into a sad old man who fights crime. But like, if anything was more like prepped for being a TV show, I don't know what it would be, you know, like gotcha. it would have been, it would have been perfect. And I don't know, every time it kind of, it started moving. I mean, I had, I can't, I can't say who it was with at different points, but like I would go into these meetings where they'd be like, okay, so you've got this Triceratops who fights monsters, but what if we did it live action and made it like boy meets world, but with Mr. Feeney being a Triceratops? I'm like, well, oh shit, Mr. Feeney. <laughs> like, obviously, if you can get actual Mr. Feeney and, you know, a few drinks, I'm in. But, like, no, like, just, just let it be what it's going to be. Let it be what it's meant to be. It's meant to be, you know, in the vein of Ninja Turtles or, you know, any of the myriad other shows about mutant crime fighters that have existed in my time. Um, you know, Black Sand Beach would make an amazing TV show as long as like people realize like this is a horror story about a kid dealing with like trauma, and he's you know it's a the the, the premise in Black Sand Beach is this kid hasn't been to this place for for four years, and then he finds his journal from the previous year when he was at the beach and he doesn't remember it, and it's about him and his cousins and his best friend trying to like uncover what happened last summer that he has like lost the memory of piecing it together, yeah. And it's 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 spooky as fuck, you know. We have real scary monsters going on in that book, and it's very very good because of it. And it, but it like takes something pretty awful that kids don't need an accurate story about. They need a metaphor. Yeah. Um. And that would be a great TV show, I think. But then people come along and say, like, we're going to make it a fun story about going to the beach and they fight monsters with cool weapons they build. No, no, that you're you're missing the spine. You're missing it. the point. Yeah, you're missing the point. Love it, brother. So, bro, you've been such a great guest, man. You know, I want you to check out Rich right here on his website, richardfairgray.com. All right? As it sounds, folks. Richard Fair Gray. And that's gray with an A, not an E. Okay? Yeah. So, check it out. I mean, amazing creator that is doing his thing. Uh, if you're enjoying the content, please like, subscribe, to turn on notifications, my people. And I need you to visit my amazing podcast family over on the cover capes.com killing every week no no prize the friend of crusade outside the panel flip side focus i mean uh old time show i mean you guys have no idea how much great content is coming from there especially if you're comic book fans they cover everything so check them out for real and of course you know if, if you like what i'm doing just give me a big follow on the real Almega all over i got it all right but most importantly though it's about the big homie RichardFairGray.com is the website. By everything he's doing, you will not regret it. Trust me. He's doing what he's doing. Check out the web comments. Check everything. And Rich, last last words here. Any advice for any up and coming creators? Just make stuff. Just make everything you possibly can. Like you get good by making stuff. You get better by making more stuff. And like you know, uh, my my first book that was like my first thing that was discovered by someone was was my hundredth book like wow you know and i uh, that that's the only way that's i i i i work I, I draw 16 hours a day minimum there you go stay on the grind folks you got this yo we believe in you you got it don't quit you got it believe in yourself rich thank you again for your time many Thanks blessings many blessings brother i had a great conversation with you bro i dig your energy 
big Thank time, you. brother. Well, I will, I will and, come back anytime. I love talking. So any anytime you got something new, bro, when the next yeah. you come, let's come back on, brother. Yeah, so with that, as our mega brother, you know what the auto tells you to do. With that, hasta la próxima, mi gente. Later. Wepa! Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 